Hello friends, welcome to the cool Vedas, that's Vedas school. In the last video we saw how Pandu was cursed by the great sage Kindama. As a result of which, Pandu's life took an unimaginable turn. Today, let's listen along and find out how a new life unfolds for Pandu. Now this story has been mentioned in Sambhava Parva in Adi Parva. So let's listen along. Shattered by Kindama's curse, Pandu, with a painful heart, said his followers in the forest thus, I shall now adopt the Brahmacharya mode of life. I shall certainly bring my passions under complete control by severe ascetic penances, forsaking my wives and other relatives and shaving my head, I shall alone wander over the earth. Forsaking every object of affection and aversion and covering my body with dust, I shall make the shelter of trees or deserted houses my home and I shall leave by begging for food. The king having thus wept in sorrow, with a sigh he looked at his wives Kunti and Madri and then he addressed them thus. He said, let the princesses of Koshala, that is his mother, then Vidura, the king with our friends, the venerable Satyavati, Bhishma, the priest of our family, the brahmanas of rigid vows, and all elderly citizens depending on us, be informed that Pardu has retired into the woods to lead a life of asceticism. Let them be informed that Pandu has renounced his throne and the comforts of life. Hearing these words from their Lord, who had set his heart on a life of ascetism in the woods, both Kunti and Madri addressed him politely and said, O oh, Great One, there are many other modes of life which you can adopt and in which you can undergo the severest penances along with us your wedded wives, with which, for the salvation of your body, that is freedom from rebirth, you may obtain heaven along with us. We also, in the company of all our Lord, and for his benefit, controlling our passions and bidding favour to all luxuries, shall subject ourselves to the severest austerities. O oh, Great One, you of great wisdom, if you abandon us, we shall then this very day truly depart from this world, O King. The great Pandu, hearing these words from his beloved wives, was very pleased, and he then looked at the Brahmanas and took off his necklace of precious golds, his bracelets, his large earrings his valuable robes and all the ornaments of his wife and gave it to them. Then, summoning his attendants, he commanded them, saying, Return you to Hastinapura and proclaim unto all that Pandu with his wives will stay in the woods, having renounced all wealth, desire and happiness. Then those followers and attendants, crying out loud, Oh, we are doomed, they cried. With tears trickling down their cheeks, they left the monarch and his wives and returned to Hastinapura, carrying all Pandu's wealth with them so as to distribute them in charity. Dhritarashtra, the loving brother of Pandu, hearing everything that had happened to him in the woods, wept deeply for his brother. He brooded continuously, unable to relish the comforts of the palace without his brother. Meanwhile, the Kuru prince Pandu, having sent away his attendants, he then, accompanied by his two wives, having fruits and roots for food, went to the mountains of Nagashata. He next went to Chaitrarata, and then he crossed the Kalakuta, and finally crossing the Himavad, he arrived at Gandhamadana. Protected by Mahabhutas, Siddhas and great Rishis, Pandu lived 
sometimes on level grounds or sometimes on mountain slopes. He then journeyed onto the lake of Indradhyumna. Hence, crossing the mountains of Hamsakuta, he then went to the mountains of Shatashringa, the mountain of hundred peaks. And there in Shatashringa, Pandu continued to practice ascetic austerities. The image in the left side of the screen shows these places where Pandu travelled while he was leaving, leaving in the woods, whereas the image on the right side of the screen shows the military expansions Pandu had made during his rule in Hastinapura. You can find the link to this site in the description box below. It's an interesting work. Now, back to the story. So, Pandu, having reached Shatashringa, devoted himself to severe asceticism. Within a short time, he became the favourite of the whole body of the Siddhas and Charanas residing in Shatashringa. Some of the rishis would call him brother, whereas some would treat him as a friend, while others cherished him as their son. And after a long time, having acquired great ascetic merit, Pandu became like a Brahma Rishi, that is, a great Brahma Rishi, though Pandu was a Kshatriya by birth. Then, one fine day, that is on the day of the new moon, the great Rishis of Shatashringa assembled together, and they were on the point of starting on their expedition to meet the great Lord Brahmadeva. Seeing them, Pandu asked, to, asked those rishis as to where they were going. To this, the great rishis answered, O oh son, there will be a great gathering today of devas, rishis and pitras in Brahma's abode. We are about to go there now. Hearing this, Pandu rose up suddenly, desirous of visiting heaven along with the great rishis. So, accompanied by his two wives, when he was on the point of following the rishis in the northerly direction from the mountains of Shatashringa, those great rishis addressed him saying thus. They said, O son, in our journey, as we gradually go up the mountains, we have seen on its delightful breast many regions inaccessible to ordinary mortals. We have seen land of the gods, Gandharvas and Apsaras. There are many regions that are covered with snow and have no vegetable and animal existence. In some places, the downpour of rain is so heavy that they are perfectly inaccessible and incapable of being utilized for habitation. Not to speak of other animals, even winged creatures cannot cross them. The only thing that can go there is air and only Siddhas and great rishis have access to those places. How shall these princesses ascend those heights, O Pandu? Unaccustomed to pain, they will be incapable of climbing such a mountain. Therefore, don't come with us, O son. Hearing these words from the great rishis, Pandu was very saddened. And he said, O oh, fortunate ones, will I never be able to reach heaven? Great ones, with your knowledge, please tell me, if I will ever be able to reach heaven, will I ever be able to have children from my wives? Is there any chance for a miracle for me to have children? Just as my mother got me when all the hopes were doomed for her. Is there a chance for such a miracle in my life? The rishis, hearing this, they answered thus, O king, with our prophetic eyes, we do see children in your future. So, Pandu, with your actions, accomplish what destiny has in store for you. You will be blessed with illustrious children just like the devas. Pandu was very puzzled and also extremely happy at the same time hearing this. The rishis, meanwhile, bid farewell to Pandu and started on the journey to meet Brahmadeva. And Pandu rushed back to his wives. Now, will the great Guru King Pandu be able to transgress Rishi Kindama's curse 
and beget children upon his wives? Let's read along and find out. Please like, share and subscribe our channel for more Mahabharata stories. Do not forget to press the bell icon. Thank you. Namaste.